Hey guys, so today obviously I'm talking about organic and when organic is not vegan. I've talked about this uh, a lot, I think in like several different videos, probably like five different videos, but uh, it's kind of all over the place. I don't have one video dedicated to this, so yeah, here we go. And I won't go, I won't be going too in depth with stuff because the video would be super, super long. But if you guys do want more information, I'll be mentioning that throughout the video. So uh, if you want me to do a video kind of dedicated to a certain topic and going more um, in detail with stuff, then let me know in the comments. So with the exception of veganic, and I may do a video on that, this is one of those times if you want me to do a video talking about uh, veganic farming then leave that in the comment section below but with the exception of veganic organic relies on animal agriculture so they buy byproducts like manure and bone meal fish blood meal stuff like that for fer fertilizer um, obviously this profits the animal agriculture industry it saves them money in waste disposal uh, and it ultimately makes meat cheaper this may be excusable if there were benefits to organic food you know, for health or for the environment or both. Um, but overall, the evidence just does not support this. So in terms of human health, the biggest problem, again, would have to do with fertilizer using this animal based fertilizer, this feces based fertilizer. This is going to increase the risk for antibiotic superbugs, which are obviously not something that we want. Uh, I talked about this more in this video. Another issue, a big myth and a big reason why people do choose organic, it's because they think that organic is pesticide free when it is not. Um, some is, some certified organic food certainly could be pesticide free, but so could some conventionally grown produce. There's no standard. The only thing that you cannot use if your food is certified organic in the United States is synthetic pesticides, but there are plenty of natural pesticides that they can still use. And there are even times when these pesticides, these natural pesticides are used in much larger amounts because they're just less effective and sometimes even less safe than the uh, synthetic alternative. Copper-based pesticides, neem oil, these are natural pesticides and can be used in organic farming. Um, and because they are natural, they are very poorly regulated, even though they are certainly toxic to humans. There's also evidence that for various reasons, organic produce tends to be higher in many different heavy metals. I know that some people also choose organic because of GMOs, because of genetic modification. Um, and it, that is true that organic certified uh, produce cannot be genetically modified. Um, I mean, I think it's silly and <laughs> I don't think there's any reason to not buy uh, GM foods. However, non-conventional stuff can be non-GMO as well. In fact, the vast majority of stuff of food has not been genetically modified. This list right here, this is the only uh, stuff, the only foods that have uh, GM varieties. My point here is that based on a critical look of the evidence, there's just no way that you can conclude that organic food is healthier than conventionally grown food. And so there's just no justification for buying it and as a result, supporting the suffering of animals. Again, you can just buy conventionally grown produce that uses synthetic fertilizer. I may make a more extensive video on this, on um, organic foods and health and the dangers of organic foods uh, to health, to human health. Um, yeah, let me know if you're interested in the comments. So now on to environment, and this is much more complex because again, there's no real standard. Every single farm is different, whether it's uh, organic certified or just a plain old conventional farm. Um, you know, you don't know exactly what pesticides are being used. Again, there are natural pesticides that are certainly harmful for the environment, not just human health. Um, other practices as well, like tilling, how much water is being used, what the uh, soil is like. Again, it's all over the place. Due to the fertilizers that are used, organic runoff can actually be worse than conventional. This is caused by bacteria, but also over application due to the low nitrogen content of manure. There's also the issue of yield. Organic farming tends to have lower yield. This is obviously a problem when we're talking about uh, land use, you know, having to use more land to grow the same amount of food. Obviously that is not ideal. This also makes the pesticide situation even worse. Again, every organic and conventional farm is different, but if you have an organic farmer using these dangerous natural pesticides and they're getting less produce as a result, which means basically the environmental effects are magnified per acre, 
yeah, not really an ideal situation. The average organic farm may have some advantages when it comes to carbon sequestration. That's so hard to say. Um, but how does that compare to carbon sequestration of the forest? You know, forests that could have occupied a pretty large part of that land. And where is that carbon coming from? usually animal agriculture, which has an even larger footprint. Obviously, supporting the animal agriculture industry and relying on its perpetuation is not a benefit to the environment. Don't get me wrong, moving away from energy-intensive fertilizer that's often used in conventionally grown pr produce, certainly this is a good thing, but that doesn't mean that switching to factory-farmed feces is a good solution. It's not. And neither is abandoning effective weed control and genetic engineering in favor of excessive tilling, which is terrible, and human labor, which is expensive. Some organic practices may even increase methane production and gasoline usage from the equipment that's used in the field, canceling out any speculative sequestration benefits and making organic worse than conventional. The bottom line is that there's no good evidence to suggest that organic is better for the environment than conventional, and there are many reasons to believe that it could actually be worse. So just like with the health claims, pesticides, all that kind of stuff, there's just no justification here for or buying organic and as a result supporting animal agriculture. I may also make a more extensive video on organic and the environment so again if you want that do the thing comments forgot the word. <laughs> so based on all of this, it seems like organic isn't vegan, right? That it's never vegan to buy organic. When faced with a choice like this, I would argue that it never is, that it's never vegan, because you can easily select the conventional option and it's cheaper as well. You know, you're going out of your way and paying more just to harm animals and buy into a marketing gimmick. But that's not always the case. You know, organic has exploded in the last five, 10 years. And there are times when there is an organic option, but not a conventional option. There are also times very rarely, but I have experienced this when the organic option is actually cheaper than the conventional option. So one example of this that I've experienced has been uh, with kale. Um, unfortunately, where we live, the store only has organic kale, as I've mentioned in, I think in the what I today, I'm not really eating kale now, it kind of grosses me out. But usually kale is one of the vegetables that I actually like. So it does kind of suck that the only option that we have is organic. There are also mitigating concerns, and I can think of two. So one would be purchasing vegan products. Unfortunately, a lot of the like processed vegan stuff, the mock meats and whatnot are organic and labeled non-GMO and all that kind of bullshit. Um, but I do think it's really important to support these companies and to purchase these products and to support this um, you know, growing sector. So I do think that kind of uh, overrides the fact that a lot of these do include um, organic or even all organic uh, products. The other thing would be certain organic um, products that are actually beneficial. So the one example I can think of would be shade grown coffee. I've mentioned that before. The shade grown coffee that we that we buy is organic and I think most of it is actually certified organic. The shade grown coffee they are relying mostly for, um, for fertilizer. They were relying on on the trees, right? The leaves dropping and rotting, right? So they aren't really adding a whole, from what I've read, they aren't really adding a whole lot of manure or no manure at all. Again, it's organic. So if they are adding any, it's going to have to be manure, right? It can't just be synthetic fertilizer. So that would be an issue. But everything that I've read suggests that they are predominantly or completely relying on just uh, the foliage. So it seems like overall shade grown coffee is much, much better for the environment than the uh, conventionally grown, you know, open air uh, tilled coffee. And there may be other examples like that too. Again, it's so hard to tell because um, there aren't any real standards in terms of soil quality or in terms of tillage and stuff like that. So again, it's it's really hard to tell. You could have a conventional farm that is using, um, you know, no till or as little tilling as possible that, and they're using, you know, insect pest management. So they aren't really using very much pesticides at all. That could just be incredible, but it's not organic certified, right? I mean, it's just, this is, this is one of the problems. Um, it's, it's a problem with relying on these labels and people just assuming that they're healthy. And of course, look, there's a whole industry around this, right? I kind of love how people 
always talk about Monsanto and Monsanto is the devil and it's all corporate money, money, money. But the organic industry is a huge industry. These people make a lot of money. And if you think they don't have marketers and marketing teams figuring out the best way to market their organic products, uh, it's pretty naive. Anyway, I guess that's it. So hopefully you enjoyed this. If you have any comments or questions, of course, leave them down below. Uh, if you want to subscribe, of course, you can do that. And Patreon, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. If you would like to support the channel, that is super awesome. And I will have a new video hopefully very soon.